Hey guys, welcome to me reacting to the unnerving secrets of Minecraft Illagers Deep Dive by Retro Gaming Now. Now, I have not seen this, but I've been reacting to the whole Deep Dive series, and I think it's very interesting. So far, he's had a theory about the Endermen, and also the ocean monuments and the other structures, and so far I think they're pretty good. There are some, you know, holes in the... Yeah, in the theories, which makes sense, because, you know, these are obviously theories. But, uh, yeah, anyways, guys, reaching to the description, make sure to Retro Gaming Now, thanks for those description notes. Let's get right into it. Minecraft is a mysterious and strange game. The world has so much to discover, including sweeping landscapes, vast structures, and interesting creatures. Some of these are hostile, such as the zombie, skeleton, and, of course, the creeper. Yeah. But there's a group of mobs who He did talk about the zombies and the skeletons they in the last series too. They don't attack the player with arrows or explosions. Rather, they use their intelligence for something much more sinister. They push the limits of what's Ooh. possible no matter the casualties. These are the Illagers, one of the Minecraft's least right. understood mobs. What are they So MatPat had a theory about the Illagers and Pillagers, you know, using life and death like tolling with that stuff and I don't know if he has the same theory, maybe, but I I don't know. We'll definitely see. What are they doing in their outposts and huge mansions in the woods? Why do they raid villages? Who even are they? Welcome to Deep Dive, True. a series where I explore Evil villagers? the obscure and hidden aspects of games. Tonight, we will be examining the Illagers, looking for clues, both obvious and hidden in plain sight. Hopefully, through this process, we will learn who they are and how they fit into the lore of Minecraft. Join me for a dive beneath the waves. All right. Secret of the Illagers. It's important that we recognize that the term Illager represents a group of mobs, including the Pillager, the Vindicator, and the Evoker. We'll look at the specific differences between these later on, but for now, we can talk about the Illagers as a group. It's clear that the Illagers have a close connection to the Villagers, they share certain Definitely. physical characteristics, including an oblong head and a large nose. Even their name is a pun on the word villager. However, there are some crucial differences, both in their appearance and their behavior. To understand these differences... Oh yeah, what about witches? witches? They don't count as villagers. Let's take a look at them first. I'll preface this section with a disclaimer. Oh, I'm baby. not an anthropologist, so I apologize if I make any mistakes in the following analysis. Anyways, villagers live, unsurprisingly, in villages, which are scattered throughout the world. They display many Wait, characteristics what? not found in other mobs. The villagers have constructed moderately sized settlements and have adapted to yes. many different biome types. By the way, what's an anthropologist? Tundras. Although their clothes and architecture are determined by the specific climate, they nonetheless show evidence of a shared culture. For example, all villagers walk with their arms together, hiding the bare skin of their hands from others. They also exhibit specialization of labor. Different villagers have unique professions, yeah, they love jobs. And butchers, as well as more complicated employment like cartographers and clerics. These specializations work together in a bustling economy with emerald as currency. A Fletcher may not know how to make food, but that doesn't matter because the farmer does, and bread is just a few emeralds away. Oh yeah. So although the various villages may be separated- Yeah, I'm guessing he only got one bread for like, what, like half a stack of emeralds? For some reason, we don't really see evidence of inter-village communication. Each town appears to operate independently. Perhaps a good descriptor would be tribes of villagers. They have developed enough domestication and irrigation to settle down, but there's no evidence of a power structure between villages. There's no nation of villagers, just small, independent towns scattered about. He's right! Villagers, on the other hand, play by a different set of rules. They are clearly enemies of villagers, even to the point of sending out patrols to find and attack villagers. Illagers occasionally participate in more coordinated raids. attacks against villagers known as raids. Waves of every type of illager will spawn during these raids. Both patrols and raids... But are also witches the and the banner. big guy, the that pillagers, vindicators, and evokers see themselves as a cohesive group under a flag. Furthermore, they must have a True. way of communicating with one another across long distances in order to coordinate raids. As we'll see, the various illager types are quite spread out, yet they're still capable of banding together when they want to. So it's already clear that there are some fundamental differences in the way the illagers act compared to villagers. They have clearly defined leaders and at least some level of strategic. They do, leaders. yeah, he's right. There's more like a group, though, like a tribe, sort of thing. more capable of accomplishing shared goals. The illagers collectively want something, but what? 
We'll get to that in a little bit. So what, do they want to steal the land of the villagers? Remember how one of the important traits of the villagers is specialization? Well, illagers also exhibit this trait. However, it's much more extreme for them, to the point where their abilities seem almost totally different from one another. As I alluded True. to earlier, these specializations are Villager so specializations are just, you know, models. jobs. Let's take a look at one of them. The but they have weapons. Are the pillagers. They spawn in outpost structures that can occur in any biome where villages might be found. They're quite tall, enabling good visibility over a long distance. The pillagers complement this with crossbows, powerful weapons with higher range, accuracy, and damage compared to bows. They use scarecrows as target practice, refining their skills in their free time. Furthermore, some pillagers are sent out on patrol in groups of five. Patrols wander around, killing enemies on foot. So what is the role of the pillagers? Well, pillagers are experts at keeping unwanted enemies away. In this case, villagers. It seems True. as though their goal is to establish control over the territory between villages. Outposts are their Kind of like what I said there where they're trying to take the territory. Offering a harsh reminder to any villager foolish enough to wander about. The result of this is that villagers are essentially trapped within their own villages. Have you ever wondered why we don't see villagers traveling? I think it's because the pillagers pose such a substantial risk that it's simply not worth it. True. They have everything they need in their villages. The text below talk about the wandering trader. There are some interesting implications of this. First, it prevents villages from That's developing a, a more funny advanced intercity society. It's a visual gag. If villages were able to work together and trade, then they would have a much better chance of regaining control of the Badlands and extinguishing the Illagers. Without that, however, villagers True. can't easily evolve as a collective species. Did a villager just invent a game-changing technology such as explosives? It doesn't really matter because they can't communicate it to another village. They can't conscript an army using tax money because they can't have a government. We're getting a little bit closer to understanding what the Illagers want. Next the Minecraft Illagers update! The, <laughs> the government! Yeah. Even aggressively slaughter them. The governmental but update. But the Illagers are just the tip of the iceberg. To really know what the Illagers are up to, we must take a journey to the true heart of their operations, the Woodland Man Mansion. Alright. The Woodland Mansion is an exceedingly... Yeah, the Woodland Mansion is an interesting place. And evokers. Mansions are There's a lot of weird stuff in there, but yeah, it makes, makes sense. Spawn. They are built in one of the two dark forest biomes, places with wide, short trees that create a thick canopy of leaves overhead. The mansion towers above all, three stories high. It's one of the largest and most advanced structures in the overworld. Its architecture is majestic, with wide hallways, sweeping staircases, yep. and tall ceilings. There's an artistic flair to it all. Subtle patterns on the walls, supporting arches in the hallways, and in general, a high level of craftsmanship throughout. It's the mark of a prideful and a It's probably one of the biggest structures in the entire game. Well, well actually, Structurally, one of the biggest structures. more complex than anything we see in the villages, and although it's similar in size to some of the monuments, it feels quite a bit different stylistically. The mansions contain a huge variety of rooms. Let's explore and see if we can learn about the Vindicators and Evokers that live here. Yeah. Villagers need to survive. There's a ton of like seeker the rooms as well. They accomplish this using indoor farms of melons, pumpkins, and mushrooms. There are forges to construct the axes and other equipment. We can also find several types of bedrooms, much more ornate than the simple dwellings of the villagers. Some even have closets. There are storage rooms, they do? libraries, I didn't and know that. huge tables for discussion. A map room offers a clue as to how the villagers plan raids. But there are True. also rooms in the mansion where their purpose is a little less clear. See, one thing, he's probably getting to it, he's probably getting to it, and I was, yeah, I was, I, I apologize for pausing right before there, but one thing that's interesting that I do like is that, that if I, because I'm obviously going to compare this to Manpad's theory, because, you know, I, I can, and I will, and it just makes uh, my reaction more interesting, but I think the thing is, because in Map Pets Theory, he talks about the fact that the maps are, like, fake. They're not real maps. But in his theory, I like that he kind of says, like, oh, no, those are real maps. Those are just what they use, like, to plan raids. And that actually does kind of make sense. But at the same time, like, from the other perspective that it's, like, a fake map that they're trying... Th makes sense with, like, all the other structures that they're, like, building fake structures. Like, it kind of just makes sense, but... And I'm guessing he's going to get to the other structures that they build, like the giant, like, cats and, like, heads out of wool, and even the fake ender portal, maybe. A strange pumpkin head surrounded by minecart reels, rooms with no entrances or exits hidden within the walls. 
Lava encased in glass. Oh yeah, so he's getting to the secret rooms. Tree, whose entrance is sealed off from the hallway. A chamber with fences and a checkerboard floor. Rooms cultivating various types of flowers. And then there are the locations that have a more sinister tone to them. There are several different types of prisons, some of which even have redstone operated locks. There's an arena of sorts with tiers of audience seating. Is it for oh, yeah. boxing matches? Something tells me that's not the case. They also have these strange altar type rooms with cold stone and draped banners. What are they for? It's not immediately obvious. Our explorations of the mansion slowly paint a picture hmm. of its inhabitants. Okay. The illagers clearly have their own developed culture, different from the villagers. There's one trait that jumps out to me. The illagers are independent thinkers. They try to yeah. things. They discuss so they got outcasted because of their thinking. thinking. They have the most luxurious living conditions in Minecraft, and they have advanced weaponry. They're the most powerful group of overworld mobs. They're the enlightened ones. There's something else about the illagers that's a bit weird. They're very interesting. So now he's getting to it, okay. They have rooms with huge wool animal statues, such as of a duck or a cat. Are they just good sculptors? Perhaps, but what's a little bit stranger is they have many sculptures of themselves. Yeah. We've seen this earlier. Pillagers had a specific banner on their faces which was draped over the outpost and carried by the raid captain. But it's taken to another level in the woodland mansions. It's above their staircases, in gallery-like rooms. And there's a giant three-dimensional statue of one of their heads while holding a torch. Hidden inside the head is a single lapis lazuli block. Yeah. There must be something special about the graven image of themselves. They wouldn't do this for no reason. That's the question we keep coming back to. Why? Why are they preventing the villagers from developing? Why do they keep building secluded mansions? Why are they acting as such a chaotic force in an otherwise mostly peaceful I'm area? guessing they're mad at them because they were outcasted. The remaining illagers we haven't covered. Vindicators spawn in the mansion and they wield axes. Wait. They are the workforce behind the illagers. They chop down wood okay. and they're probably responsible for construction of the outposts and mansions. Probably. Like the rest, they are more than capable as warriors when the time is right, but that doesn't seem to be their main job. And then there's the evoker, the evoker. The wizard of sorts. In the and then there are also vexes too. Some type of magical force. We see it with enchanting and potion brewing. The evokers, however, appear to have a much deeper knowledge of this magic than anyone else. They can summon spectral things to attack enemies from the ground, as well as vexes, which oh, are yeah. strange sword-bearing ghosts. They're the only mobs known to actively summon other entities for help. Illagers have discovered True, yeah, he's right. Works, which grants them unique powers. Maybe we can figure out what that is. Magic in Minecraft has structure to it. For example, enchanting is not random. It doesn't just happen out of nowhere. It requires energy in the form of experience. True. Although experience can be gained through actions such as smelting or mining, killing a mob produces much more, sometimes an order of magnitude higher. What we're seeing here is a system where death is the primary... So wait, they're experience. trying to get experience? Weapons, the most effective way is to kill other beings. So for those who have no qualms about it... So that's a theory, they're trying to get experience points. To gaining magical power. I think what's happening is the evokers have realized this, and through their studies, they found a way to harness this power. What's the catalyst, though? It's the Totem of Undying. Oh, yeah, so... Life and death the sort of thing? The Totem of Undying is a very unique item in Minecraft. It allows the user to survive one fatal blow. In some sense, it offers control over death, the final and most powerful of fates. Yeah. If death truly is a big source of magical energy, as I've suggested, then finding a way to hold death's restraint in physical form would be an extremely powerful... So capability. what, they get experience to a challenge of that? ...by the illagers. It's one thing they've been able to do that is completely unique to them. We may be tempted to think that the primary use of the Totem of Undying is to escape death. And while that's certainly true for the player, I'm not sure that tells the whole story for the Illagers. If the Evokers are trying to escape death, then why don't they use the Totem in battle? That's what You're leads right. me to believe that the magical capabilities it possesses are much more valuable than simply staying alive. Sure, a few extra hearts is nice, but why waste the Totem just to delay the inevitable? Although we don't have an explicit explanation as to how the totem works, there are some subtle hints. First, let's examine its appearance. It looks, to looks be like a villager. An illager head. Notice the large nose. But it looks like it a villager. Makes sense though. from the clues we've seen maybe. in the mansion. The totem of undying may be the result of their experimentation using wool statues. There's something else. Really? About okay. Their eyes are green. At first, that doesn't seem strange, as illagers and villagers both have green eyes. But the totem of undying has a much brighter tone. It's a similar color to something we talked about a few minutes ago. 
experience. Since experience oh, can take the so yeah. life force draining upon So death, what, made out of experience? Of undying need to be powered by vast amounts of experience in order to prevent death? Oh, said, yeah, the, the particle colors seem happen. similar. It always requires energy from somewhere. Why would the totem be any different? If this is true, then the implications are deeply unsettling. Suddenly, hmm. the villagers' actions towards the villagers make sense. That's an interesting the idea. So much more powerful in combat than villagers. Without the player, the villagers only have the iron golem to protect them, and even that would be destroyed after several waves of a raid. If they wanted to, the illagers could wipe all the villages off the face of the planet. True. But they don't want to do that. Why? Well, villages are a great source of experience. Any player will tell you that. Trading, oh yeah, trading with them. Smelting all generate experience. Experience that's ready for the taking when the time is right. Consider. The illagers keep the villages separated so they can't develop new technology mm. as a society. They do, however, allow the villagers to survive on their own as small towns, farming, working, and reproducing, all the while slowly increasing their total stored experience. At a certain point, though, the illagers band together and form a raiding party. Mm. The villages experience that's an interesting the premise. To the illagers, that's so interesting. That's an interesting bombs. theory. They need to be not really premise, but, but theory, the definitely. They're capable of mounting a collective defense. They feel no remorse over Honestly, that is village, way more interesting. More I like that a lot. But they better. certainly don't want to extinguish all of them at once, as it would spell disaster for their magical quests. There's a long term benefit to keeping some villages alive. Let's think bigger. The Totem of Undying is very powerful. What might they be trying to do with that magic? Well, one option has to do with teleportation. I explained in a previous video really? the timeline of the end. You can watch that using the card above. Really? To give you a quick recap, I think that in the grand scheme of Minecraft, villagers and illagers are relatively recent developments in the world, showing up after all the portals were closed. Well, yeah, they're like a back. different species. There's evidence that illagers are attempting to find a way to teleport to other dimensions. In the Enderman video, I propose that all interdimensional travel always they requires They make a fake end things, portal. Heat and hard materials. The illagers might not have quite understood this, but they were at least on that path, such as with the lava encased in glass or the obsidian spheres. The smoking gun, however, is an extremely rare secret room that sometimes occurs Yeah, in here we go. This room is shaped like an in portal room. There's TNT, silverfish stairs, and a chest with ender pearls. Yeah. Are the illagers trying to solve the mystery of the in portal using magical force? I think that interdimensional travel is just one of their many projects. It seems as though they managed to replicate a spawner in one of their rooms, solving one mystery of the overworld. Another room is that which has blue wool and piles. There's a famous theory that they're trying to create Steve, as he has the same colors in his clothes. Yeah, that was that was what Game Pat said. Them. Why not a living, breathing character? If they had control over death, could they create life? If we want to take this a step further, what if the player is the result of their successful experiment? Ooh. We're starting to get into some of the thorny... That's an interesting thought. Minecraft, which are well beyond the scope of this video. I don't That's know a sure really interesting thought, actually. Attempting to do, but I do think that they saw the totem as a tool, not as the end goal. They recognized its power and enacted control over the villagers in order to maintain that power. I can't see your faces right now, but I guarantee that some of you are looking at me like I'm a lunatic. It's always yes. good to think critically whenever someone proposes a theory. Don't but I'm not. Honestly, I'm with them. As with all theories, we need to find any leaps of faith that we've taken or issues with our evidence. Those of you who really know Minecraft will have already found the problem. Villagers who are killed don't drop experience. This would seem to disprove the idea Ooh. of villagers using villages I as didn't realize that. Forms. And from a literal perspective, that's true. However, I'm inclined to believe that this is a gameplay decision, not a lore decision. Hear me out. Why would every single mob, players included, drop experience on death except for villagers? This is especially weird considering that experience is clearly an important part of the mechanics of villagers. I think the purpose of this is to encourage players to trade with the villagers instead of just killing and looting. Them yeah, them. he actually does I'm make a good sure point there. Be special in this regard. Yeah. Maybe explanation isn't good enough for you, but that's my thought. I think that's actually a decent Let's explanation ask for question. that. If the Totem of Undying grants magical powers, then why can't it be used by the player? I think the answer is as simple as the player doesn't know how to cast spells. Remember, the Illagers oh. discovered this stuff through years of experimentation. I think it's totally reasonable that the player wouldn't know what to do with the Totem. It's worth thinking about, though. Another thing that I've okay. implied but haven't elaborated upon is the idea of Illagers being outcasts. 
It's not yeah, I talked about that. that. Villagers whose lives are ruled by routine might think poorly of people who think outside the box. There are instances of this beyond just the illagers. The wandering trader, for example, doesn't follow the rules of the village. He wanders about with his llamas, selling bizarre items. He also displays the skin of his hands, something that no quote-unquote traditional villagers do. This is same for illagers. When attacking, we can see their hands. It's a subtle detail that I think is important. Another outcast is the witch. The witch, yeah. Down for obvious reasons. Illagers seem to at least tolerate witches. They can join patrols and will spawn in raids. The witch does not seem to be an illager though, as she has none of their imagery in her hut. Still, witches do work together with illagers when it benefits them both. So yeah, honestly, I think this was actually a pretty cool theory. I, I like the idea. It's definitely not true. I'm very skeptical about it. But at the same time, I think I think it's interesting. The thing about the totem, yeah, where like players can't use it, and then also the witch out outcast thing, like that that's a little bit weird. But honestly, like, other than that, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Honestly, I think what he said about, you know, how that that this was like a game design thing where, you know, they don't drop experience points on death because, you know, they don't want players killing them. Which, yeah, that is fair. That is definitely fair. And honestly, I like the idea of using experience points in the actual lore. I honestly love games that do that, that like take gameplay aspects and actually add them to the lore. And I will say that's probably why that like this theory also is a little bit shaky, even with the whole like uh, thing where, oh, well in gameplay they don't drop experience points, but then when you add the experience points to the theory, that's like a gameplay mechanic. So I mean, I guess there's that, but honestly, I still think this theory is actually pretty good. I actually like the idea of it. And I think it's very interesting. I think it's very interesting, in my opinion. You know? Especially the theory about that we're actually a creation. Like, we're actually the success. Like, we're basically the one thing that actually worked out for them. Which, honestly, I think is a great idea. It's definitely not true, because it's definitely... Because you randomly just spawn, which doesn't really make sense. But honestly, I think it's... That's a cool idea, I think, that they actually created the player. That's an interesting thought. There isn't really much evidence to prove that, but I think it's interesting. And I feel like with this theory, there's a lot to prove it, but there are definitely some things that can debunk it. And I think... It is very interesting. The fact that he doesn't really go too much in depth about the weird parts of it where, like, they're making, like, sculptures and stuff, you know, and, like, the wool. He does go into the nether port or the end portal talking about teleportation, and I really don't know why they would want to use teleportation. I don't really know why. I guess it's to just experiment because they do seem like free thinkers. I do agree with that. So yeah, honestly, this was just a very interesting theory, and yeah, I honestly love the idea of that the totem of undying is made from experience points. That's so cool. That's honestly such a cool idea. But yeah, anyways, guys, if you guys enjoy, leave a like and subscribe to my channel. See you next one. Bye!